Greetings gamers, I'm Lewis Crane, and today I'm reviewing Deodra Empty, a free roaming shmup or shoot 'em up developed by Frozen Orb and published by Rocking Android. So uh, one of the interesting things about this game is you don't actually have all of your configuration options available the first time you play. Um, by having enough play time and uh, play attempts and uh, stages cleared, some formula thereof, uh, you unlock more of these options. Uh, even though I've been in the game on normal mode at least once and played through like 20 something, well, attempted 20 something times, uh, I still have a few options I haven't fully unlocked. Uh, full equipment mode would make this game maybe a little too easy and boring. It gives you almost full upgrades. I mean, the game, so I'm gonna leave it off. I'm gonna just leave regular equipment mode on, which gives me a few low level upgrades. Otherwise, I mean, this game can be really, really hard. Uh, as you can see from number of plays, it took me about 20 attempts and about 2 hours before I beat this game for the first time. So even on normal mode, or natural level as they call it, in this localization, um, it's pretty brutal. And then true level, I've tried once for 5 minutes, I, I died horribly. I don't know that I have the spirit to um, to try it again. And then I don't even know what these are. I, I guess I unlock these if I beat true level? I don't know, it's, it's nightmarish to think about. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, you unlock more things by playing the game more. Uh, the first time you play with like zero playthroughs, zero minutes, um, you only have a choice between Wind Force, which is the spread shot, or Ghost Flame, which is the straight shot, um, which is a little more powerful. Uh, oh, okay. Someone's talking to me about Pokemon. Um, wow, I just got distracted. Oh, right, okay. So I'm gonna go for lasers, because I like consistency. Uh, Wisp Projector for the option type, which, uh, it's a little boring, it doesn't actually damage enemies, but it does block um, shots, so uh, that's you kind of need it to get through the later stages, or even to survive for a few moments in um, hard mode. And I'll go with the rolling pattern. So earlier I mentioned this was a free roaming shmup, um, as opposed to like when I normally say vertical or horizontal. Uh, I mean, even though the general orientation of the game is... Uh, horizontal. It's free roaming like uh, Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender in that um, the map doesn't scroll by you. Um, it's just one continuous field that you go back and forth in to engage enemies. Um, unlike Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender though, uh, this game doesn't have wrapping of the map. So for example, even if I go all the way to the right, it won't suddenly send me back to the left side of the screen um, as you would in uh, Aqua Kitty. Or for that matter, um, you know, some strategy games of a global map, like Civilization, also have map wrapping. But yeah, the fact that it's a free roaming field um, reminds me of Aqua Kitty, Mokmai Defender. Um, the, the general art um, direction of this game reminds me of Mushishihime-sama. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know what the music reminds me of. I mean, Mushishihime-sama had like a very, um, almost like lounge techno vibe. This is kind of much more relaxed and classical. Uh, let's see, what, what other shmups does this game remind me of? Okay, so between stages you can spend the coins to uh, get upgrades. Sure, let's get an option so I can show you what I meant, meant by that. And a uh, speed upgrade. There we go. So the fact that you have a recharging shield so you don't die immediately upon taking enemy damage, um, and as long as you avoid like consecutive shots, you'll be able to uh, recharge and stay alive. Um, and also I have a little speed boost there, I can use some kind of time. That reminds me of Astabreed, which was another shmup I reviewed some months ago. I kind of feel like by just number of games of the genre I, I review, I probably actually wind up reviewing more shmups than anything else. Um, I mean, I guess it's kind of easy just because shmups are generally shorter, like, I don't have to spend more than, like, depending on what game it is, anywhere from two to, like, maybe at most ten hours to really thoroughly get through um, everything there is to get through in that shmup. Or, I mean, everything I can physically manage to get through since some shmups are so really difficult that I you know, I don't beat them on hard mode. Uh, for some, like Castle Shikigami, <laughs> I just don't ever beat them, period. 
Um, I know so like shmups are such like a niche game that uh, if I weren't reviewing some of these, most of which don't even have Metacritic scores, uh, what chance is there that any of you would have heard of them? And I feel like that'd be a shame because as like niche as this, oh, like I just took a hit, but I'm not gonna die yet. My, you can see my little defense meter um, recharge, and now it's ready again, so I can take our hit now. If I'd been hit again while I was returning the shield, then I would have lost a life. Check it out, that dragon skull with like part of a spinal cord attached. Creepy. So yeah, this is very much an indie game, and you can tell because in a moment you'll notice you'll notice that uh Yeah. They they didn't have a a flipped art asset for that dragon skull boss. I mean I'm not really an artist or programmer, so I don't know how many additional assets the developer would have had to dedicate to mirror flip that skull so it would face you in the right direction and attack you when you're to the right of it, but um, that's like one of the, like, the little flaws of this game that like I'm actually willing to call it as a flaw. Because I mean, because I do so many low-budget indie games, and I understand the constraints of those indie games, I don't necessarily view some of the limitations as um, flaws per se. Like, Stardew Valley, it's totally in like a 8, well, 16-bit style. But, like, that's a given that that's what they were going for, so I don't view the low-res graphics as a flaw. Um, but, in this case, for Deodre MC, I do feel like the fact that the boss monsters don't actually flip around, um, that is kind of an art flaw. Because basically then they're shooting... They're shooting through their own heads or bodies, like, backwards to get to you, which is a little jarring. Breaks suspension display just a little bit. But yeah, I do find this music quite relaxing, even though the gameplay gets hectic at times. And this is normal mode, mind you, um, which still took me 20 attempts to beat. Um, let's just say I would have, like, game over by now if it's for hard mode. So yeah, the... Those, like, orange shots I can just destroy with my own weaponry. Though they do uh, effectively then protect the enemies for a moment. Uh, the purple shots I cannot shoot down with my weapons, but that's why it takes the defensive uh, wisp projector option type, which doesn't damage enemies, but it does block purple shots. Actually, the amazing thing is that it even blocks... Like, you can see from that, that was blocking the purple shots for me. But uh, what's amazing is... The Wish Protector even blocks blue shots, um, basically giant laser-type weaponry from some bosses, so... Uh, effectively, you, if you want to beat the game, especially in a hard mode, I imagine, you, you need to go for Wish Protector as your option of choice and not the other ones, even though, arguably, it's more fun to have options and actually shoot weapons. I mean, also probably easier to kill monsters to pick up their coins, but... Like like most shmup games, this uh, the other MC doesn't have too much of a story. Uh, it's told with basically one paragraph or less of um, text between stages, which is going to be entirely too small for you to read if you're watching this video on a mobile device. Yeah, I do find not just Wish Predictor, but also the rolling formation to be the best for seeing a lot, especially once you have three or four of those options. Oh man, I'm gonna, all right. If I want to improve my weaponry, I have to just hold my coins for now.
think, yeah, that little text down there. So it seems to be a dialogue between um, the character you're playing as and her presumably missing or uh, deceased or, or something older sister. Oh, I guess I should have said spoiler warning. But, I mean, it's... It's kind of a convention for most of these shmup games that the story is not that in-depth. Um, I mean, Castle Shigami and, I guess, the Toho franchise, um, they are notable exceptions in being very story-heavy. I mean, as, like, con convoluted and nonsensical as the stories may be, um, they are at least existent. Um, I guess, well, As to Free was, like, a mixed bag. I mean, you can argue it had a story because it had, like, two, like, visual novel-style cutscenes, but, um... You know, actually, that, that's... I should be fair. Astapri did have a story, if you paid attention. But, like, Ikaruga, as much as I love it, really didn't have a story. Um... None of the earlier Gradius or R-type stories really had much of a story or, or narrative to follow. I mean, they had, like, the basic, like, paragraph of convoluted gobbledygook that they put in the instruction manual back in the days when people bought physical games with instruction manuals that doubled as like story booklets. Um, man, it's so weird to think about a pre-digital game economy. If it looks like I'm experiencing a little bit of- uh oh I better stay safe for a while. If it looks like I'm experiencing some some, some slowdown, uh, the game itself doesn't really slow you down, um, even with a bajillion D enemies and bullets on screen, but I think the fact that I'm also recording this um, is kind of weird. It's, it's often these really indie games that when they know they're being recorded, it's sort of like, oh no, I'm, I'm so embarrassed of my low budget and like low res graphics, I'm going to slow down the system when you're trying to record me. I mean, which I think is ridiculous, because people should understand and love indie games for what they are. It's just like people. You should understand and love people for who they are, and not who you want them to be. Fast and Furious right here. Actually, I guess the music in this stage uh, reminds me a little bit of like maybe like Exceed um, Vampire Rex or something. Oh, okay. They're actually coming right out of there, so I stand there. They're inevitably going to run into me and damage me. Oh, whoa. They're just coming from all over the place. Oh, jeez. But yeah, so many of these purple things would be hitting me if uh, I didn't have the defensive option type protecting me. See if I can attack some of them before they escape. Oh yeah, the way you choose to map the controls on your uh, controller, and I do recommend playing this game with controller and not attempting with the keyboard. I mean, you could, but um, I would not go with the default control scheme on a controller. I would. I would fool around a bit until you found something that felt right to you in terms of being able to quickly switch from moving and shooting uh, left versus right. Because I have a set to where I have one dedicated button for shooting right and one dedicated button for shooting left. Um, for whatever bizarre reasons, 
to the phone control scheme seems more like a toggle direction button, which uh, I feel like requires an extra half second of reaction time to really pull off, so I, I'm a little confused, confused as to why one button dedicated shooting left and one button dedicated shooting right isn't the default scheme. And I feel like I'm gonna lose a life here because this is taking so long for my shield to... Okay, good. My shield is ready again. Oh yeah, um, I forget, did I already mention it? So one of like the few actual things about this game that I wish were done better were, were the fact that these boss art assets... Oh, and I lost life, of course I did. They don't flip over or rotate when they're going the other direction. But, I mean, it is what it is. This game does have a pretty limited budget. I mean, Sony, it sells for $6 at full price, not even sale price, so... Oh! Whoa, okay, whoa! Alright. Oh, whoa, okay. Went off the top of the map. Is he below me? Yeah, he's below me. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. Actually, I shouldn't say he actually hit, because I actually don't know the gender of this boss, or if he has a gender as you understand it in a conventional sense. Yes, uh, cis heteronormativity kind of sucks for a lot of people. Okay, finally. Those, and not enough for another option. So it's kind of interesting. This is like kind of only half a step up because this is a clearly more powerful beam. You can just see from intensity of the graphics that this beam is more powerful, but I only shoot one of them, so in terms of total damage output, it's only like slightly better than uh, my previous one. I mean, I still have to make like a double pass to destroy some of these mobs, monsters, enemies. Alright, this stage is like mostly mini bosses. Base of its skull, like through its spinal cord. It's, it's a little. Um, what's the word I'm thinking for? Not dis, not disheartening, not discombobulating, um, disorienting. No, uh, disconcerting. It's a little disconcerting that it's shooting that way. I'm like one of those people who can really only do maybe one or at most two things at the same time. And uh, sometimes it's hard for me to remember all of my words. 
right as I'm like playing a game live. I mean, for those rare occasions when like I totally mess up and I have to like overdub my own video, um, then I can think about what I need to say. But most of the time, I'm just recording these in like one seamless take from beginning to end, gameplay and voice at the same time. So, oh, actually, oh, that, oh, I must have scored enough points or something to regain a life from earlier, because, oh, okay. And now I'm just distracting myself and dying um, repeatedly. I don't know if I'm making the beaten stage at this point. Uh-oh. Well, now I'm in the danger zone. One more hit before my shield recharges, and, uh, and it is over. I mean, granted, usually shmup games don't go past like a 20-minute mark for a video anyway. I'm not even halfway through. Uh, the other empty is like surprisingly long. Um, it is like 10 or 11 stages, not counting like the possible bonus stages. And I actually don't know how to unlock the bonus stages. Like, I mean, I've beaten the game once um, under normal conditions, but apparently not well enough to get whatever the bonus stage is supposed to be, and therefore maybe a different ending. Just one more option and I'll have really premium coverage against those purple and blue shots. But yeah, like I said, I really do like some of the music in this game. Oh yeah, time for some head bobbing. Uh oh, gotta avoid those head on collisions. Oh, that was really head on, that was like a side swipe. Whoa! When the purple shots are coming in um, that, that thick, uh, some will even slip between your uh, wish projector options. Oh well, this has been Theater Empty, a free roaming shmup. Uh, Lowest Crane approved. Um, some minor flaws, but totally forgivable for the genre and the budget of this game. Um, still really ashamed that this has no Metacritic score. Uh, maybe one day if I become an actual professional reviewer at like Kotaku or Polygon or something, I'll have to give it a, a critic score and then maybe that'll be enough to generate an actual Metacritic score. Well, I mean, a couple people have to do it, but yeah, let's screen approved. Uh, if you liked this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. I'm Liz Crane, signing off.